everyone, welcome back to my craft room. If you're new to my craft room, then welcome. I've had a lot of people asking me about my um, little holders that I have here for my paint brushes and sponges and things, and they wanted to know if I would show what I did to them. Um, I just wanted to do something just to brighten up my craft room here. I had these things like in cans and whatever else, but I thought making something, you know, a little bit prettier would just brighten everything up in here. So I made this one here. And they're just napkins that I pick up. I pick up napkins pretty much everywhere I go. This napkin actually came from the Dollar Tree, and I really like this one a lot. Um, and these are just the uh, candle holders from Dollar Tree that I picked up. I mean, you could use anything, really. You could probably even just do it on a can or something if you have one. And then I have this one here that I did. And I have this one here. And this one, I have my um, watercolor pencils in here. But this one I actually put little pearls on, and the only reason I did that is because I messed up the paint on the bottom and it didn't look very nice, so I figured, nah, I'm not going to redo it, I'm just going to put some pearls around it. So that's what I did for this one. And this napkin came from, most of the other napkins came from Amazon, um, and or the Christmas tree shop. I've been picking up napkins everywhere I go, pretty much, and this one I know came from Amazon because it's one of my favorite napkins, and this has all of my small paint brushes in it. So I figured I would show you guys how I did this real quick. It's really easy and it's a lot of fun. I love doing this stuff. Um, so I've been having a lot of fun making little containers for my things here. And I still have a few more I want to make, so I figured I would make one here uh, on camera today. So all you're going to need is a napkin. And this one I just got actually yesterday in the mail. It came from Amazon. I ordered it. And I thought it was great because I love to take them apart in different pieces and just kind of pieces together like a little collage and that's what makes it a lot of fun. But this is a three ply napkin so the first thing you want to do with that is get your um, two plies off so you end up with just the one ply to work with. It's much easier if you do it this way then you end up with a lot less wrinkles and things too. So that's the piece we're going to use and then these pieces I just keep on the side here that I can wipe my fingers off with you know, whatever. So then to paint this, I'm going to use some chalk paint. I like the home, uh, home, yeah, home decor, folk art chalk paint. You can use any brand of chalk paint, I guess. And it all depends on the background of your uh, napkin. Sometimes I'll do more of an uh, off-white or a cream color if the napkin's more of a cream color. But this one is pretty much white, um, the background on here. So we're just going to use white. And then on the bottom and the top edge I'm going to use this lilac. I thought that would look pretty. It kind of matches some of the pretty flowers in here. So first thing we're going to do is paint this and this is really easy. Um, for these I like to sponge paint them. It gives it a little bit of texture and it covers real easy and you don't have any brush marks. So all you're going to do is put some chalk paint in a little container or lid, whatever you have. These are those little containers from the Dollar Tree. And these are the sponges from the Dollar Tree. And all you have to do to do this is just, I put a lot of paint on my sponge, and it's really quick and easy. And then you just go around it, and get it nice and even, spread it out. Just make sure you're patting it and not rubbing it, because then you'll end up with lines in it. But go all the way around it. It's really fast. And then we're going to let this coat dry really good. That's the main thing with any of these steps, is just to make sure you let everything dry really well. And see how fast that is? We're almost done with that already. And then to do the bottom, I like to take, I have this old jar here, or you could use a vase or something. This fits right down over here perfectly. I already have paint all over my hands. That's all right. And then we're just going to go around this edge here. See, I do this so I don't get paint all over me, but I still get paint all over me. So I'm just going to keep turning that around, and paint around the rim. And I'm not going to do the bottom because I think I'm going to paint the bottom um, purple too because this bottom edge is going to be purple. So that's it for your first coat. And then you just let this dry. I'd say let this dry for a couple hours. And then you could come back, put your second coat on there, and let that dry. And I like to do that kind of stuff like at nighttime. Before I go to bed, I'll throw some paint on these and just let them sit and dry overnight. So then when you're done, you'll have something like this. 
was that one I did last night. All right, let me get some of this paint off of me. So now what I figured out to do, I, to make a nice clean rim around the bottom, that's what I was having a hard time with, is I use this floral tape. Now this stuff is nice because it won't actually stick to the container, but it sticks to itself. So you need a nice long piece of this, and you don't have to worry about pulling off all, any of your paint or anything. So I just like to hold it on there like that, and then just wrap it around, if I can do this here on camera. Just wrap it around, make a nice straight line with it like that. And then once you get over here, just stretch it a little bit. And then it will stick onto itself. But it won't stick on your paint. And that's that. So we'll get that stuck on there. Let me rip this off here where I can see what I'm doing. All right. And that's it. Then you have a nice clean line. And then I'm going to take my purple a little bit of this into a one of these little trays. I don't need a lot of this for the bottom. And I'm going to do it around the top rim, but I'm going to do the top rim after it's, I have all my images on here and stuff. So I'm just going to go around the bottom real quick. I'll use a smaller sponge for that. I think this one might be good. I've had to glue these on several times. They tend to come off of the stick when I'm washing them. But it's easy enough just to glue them back on. I hope this one's going to work for me. All right, let me get rid of my tape. So then I'm just going to put some of this purple on here. <coughs> there we go. And then you're just going to sponge this right on here. Just like that. And then I take this tape off, too, before it dries. Because I'm always afraid I'm going to pull some of that off. And this I usually just do one coat. It covers pretty good. You know, once you already have it painted white, this purple will just go on real nice. Let's see how easy it is. It's just easy peasy. I love easy DIYs. Alright, and I do want to do the whole bottom of this one purple. So I'm just going to go over this real quick with the purple paint, and then we can set this aside while we cut out our images here. And I'm not too worried if the bottom's not perfect, because I'm never going to see it again. It's going to be sitting down on my desk. Just want to make sure I didn't miss anything. Yeah, the other one that I put the pearls on, I didn't use this tape, and then my line came out really bad. I tried to do it freehand, and that didn't work out. All right, so that is it for the purple, and I just need to find my end here. Here it is, up in here. And I just pull this off. And there you go, you have your nice clean edge and it doesn't stick to it, it doesn't pull any of your paint off, it just works out really good. Alright, so let me set this over here somewhere, out of the way, it dries. Alright, now for the napkin, this is the fun part, I love cutting these napkins out. You just take your napkin, you're going to need like a smooth surface, you could do this on a counter, you could do it on like an old picture frame, a mirror or something, just, it just has to be smooth like glass, or if you have one of these, um, glass mats, that's great too. And then you just start figuring out what images you want to pull out of here. Now these aren't real tall, um, and you could probably, if you wanted to try it, to put the whole thing around it, but I like doing it piece by piece. It's just much easier. So I did cut a bunch of them out. I cut out this piece here that I'm going to use, and I cut out some of these, and I kind of measured, you know, so they're the right height and stuff, and they're not too tall for this uh, candle holder. And then to fill in little spaces, I cut out a little leaf and some of the little bees that are on here. I don't know if you could see them. There's a little bee here. But all you do with this is I use my water pen. These uh, came from Amazon. I got them for Christmas. They're to use with, like, uh, the watercolor pencils. And I like to use those. 
But if you don't have, you know, one of these, you can just use a regular, whoops, a regular paintbrush and just dip it in some water and wipe it off a little and go around the edge of where you want to cut it out. And the reason I do this is you can cut them out with scissors and stuff, but then you end up with like a straight line. But if you kind of put the water on here and just kind of hold your finger on top of the image and pull away the napkin, then it just leaves you with this little, um, fuzzy line, kind of, if you want to call it that. I don't know what you want to call it. See what I mean? You don't have a straight line. And it just blends in really well into the background then. So then after you cut all of the pieces out that you want to use, and I'm probably going to need a few more. I'm not sure yet. I usually like to put these on, and then I may cut out, you know, this little birdhouse in here, or maybe one of these little tickets or something. There's some more bees and some more flowers. But this is, uh, so I have to cut this one down a little bit shorter because it's going to be too tall. So it's great. You can just cut out whatever you want to use for your candle holder and just scrape it away. <coughs> I know some people just rip them too, but I haven't had a lot of luck with that. I find this to be the easiest way for me to do it. Let's just outline it with water and put my finger over the image. There. And now for the side that's like the straight edge here that was on, you know, from where it was cut off where the napkin ends, I just like to go down the edge of it with some water and just peel a little bit off so it doesn't look like a straight edge. It kind of looks more like the flower just growing here. You make your leaf a little roughed up. There. And now the bottom edge I don't care because that's going to be right down on that flat edge, so that really doesn't matter if that's flat or not. Let's see, then you just have your little piece of this flower. Alright, so I'm going to let that dry, and then as soon as that dries, we're going to grab some Mod Podge, and another little dish here. And I love these paint brushes. I got these at the Dollar Tree, and I like working with these. They're nice, and I like using a smaller brush to do this. I end up with less wrinkles. Because, you know, you work a smaller section at a time. So, as soon as that dries, we'll be back to finish up. Alright, that's all nice and dry now. Now's the fun part. I love piecing these things together. I think I'm going to start out with this little... Um, beehive, I guess it is. I'm calling it a birdhouse. I'm guessing it's a beehive since there's all these little bees flying around. Alright, so we're just going to place this on here where we want it. That's why I left the straight edge on the bottom because it's going to go right down here. And then you're just going to take some Mod Podge. I don't put any on underneath because it's really not necessary when you're using these really thin, you know, one ply of the napkin. It goes right through. And I have a harder time getting them on straight and getting the wrinkles out if I put it underneath too. So I just start putting this down here like this. And the Mod Podge goes right through. There. Get my straight edge where I want it. And then you're just going to work this in. Just a little at a time. And like I said, when you work with the smaller pieces, and um, a smaller brush, you end up with a lot less wrinkles. And just make sure your brush is nice and wet with the Mod Podge so you're not ripping or tugging at the napkin. You know, everyone has, I don't like to tell everybody what to do. I'm just telling you how I do it, because I know a lot of people, you know, tell me different ways that it can be done, which I'm sure. But this is just what works best for me. But whatever works best for you, you go ahead and you do that. And then I try to get, oops, got some wrinkles in there. I like to get the Mod Podge up here, because so I don't really seal these. If you wanted to put a sealer over this, like a spray or something, um, I mean, I would if I was using it for something else, like for a vase or a candle holder or something, but 
I'm just using it here on my desk. They're not going to get wet. They're not going to, you know, really have any wear and tear. They're just going to sit there and hold my paint brushes. So I just try to get wherever I don't have an image, just make sure I have some Mod Podge to make it shiny. Same thing down here. All right, now let's see. I think I'm going to try to put this little piece on next. I think I want that right down here. Right there, I believe. And we'll see how this kind of just comes together. And you never know that you cut out little pieces. It just all blends right together. Just making sure I don't have any more wrinkles in here. All right, I think that's good. I'll put some up here. You don't have to do this as you go either. You can just kind of go around wherever you don't have any Mod Podge and a piece of that napkin came off. There, so that's that part so far, and then over here I think I'm going to put another bigger piece on the back side here. So we're going to take this big piece that I cut out, and that's going to blend in right here. And I think that's good right there. I'm hoping I can save that little bee on the top, and it's not going to hang over too much. So I really wanted to keep him there. Well. I think he'll stay. There, see, it just all blends back in together really cool. So I said, this is the fun part. I love doing this. So relaxing. Yep, my little bee's just barely going to fit on there, but that's right. I'm going to add, I have a couple little teeny weeny bees that I cut out that I'm kind of going to add in here. And then I think the last piece I'm going to put back here is one of these. I'm not sure which one yet. And I don't think it's going to be that one. I don't know. It may be this piece. I don't know. I'm going to think about that. I'm going to let this dry for a little bit here. Um just so I can hang on to it a little bit better when we get on the other side. And I need to go get a drink because my throat is so dry today. I can't be um, any happier when we're done with the heat and stuff and I can open up the windows and get some fresh air. But I need to get a humidifier in this room is what I need to do. But Alright, I'm going to let this dry for a little bit and cut a couple more little pieces out I think and then we'll be back to finish this up. All right, this is dried a little bit here so I can handle it a little better. But right here I needed something, so I went back in and I just ripped out a piece of uh, one of these little pansies. And I figured that I can probably fit in here, just kind of make the stems match up a little bit. Like that. And I think, 
See now it's too dry, it doesn't want to stick even a little bit. I think that will work. Right there. Yep, look at that. It looks like it's supposed to be there. Some of these little wrinkles out. There we go. There, I think that blended in just fine. No one will ever know except all of you guys. And then I got these two. Now oh, where my little bees go? They're getting blown around here because they're so tiny. But I want to stick these on here. I'll put this guy over here. I think this is going to be the front of my thing. Hopefully, this is sticking enough to hold it just a little bit. There we go. There, right, so we got a little bee there to go into the beehive, and then I'm going to put the other little guy over here. Let's see, we're just going to stick him right there. Right like that. And that's how you can just piece it together and Make it however you want it to look. So that is it. That is all I'm going to do on this, except for the, you know, the top rim. And that's easy peasy peasy. I'm just going to take a small, um, maybe that one, that one's wet. One of these small little sponges or a brush or, you know, they have the, um, oh, I forgot this guy here that I did too with the gnomes. I got these from uh, Amazon too. You could probably do it with, you know, one of these brushes, too, if you have one of those. But I like these round ones from the Dollar Tree. So now I'm just going to get a little bit of my purple paint in a bowl here. And do that first. I'm getting ahead of myself. I need another little brush. Um, I didn't make sure I had the Mod Podge all the way around my thing here. If I see any dull spots, I'm going to dip it in the paint. I just go around and put some in there. Oh, see, you now there's a spot that has nothing on it. It would not be shiny at all. I'm sure my little bees are on there good. All right. Alright, I think everything looks pretty good here. Everything looks shiny. I don't want to leave any big globs of it. There we go. Alright. So now that I think I have Mod Podge everywhere I need it, so it's shiny, now we're going to take this little brush and just dip it into this purple like we used on the bottom and then I'm just gonna you know just tap down on it not really hard or anything let me move this over a little closer um, I'm gonna try to do this with my left hand so I'm not in the way but just press down on the top here just try to keep it straight up and down so you know you make a nice straight line all the way around And you really only need one coat of this, too. And that's it. It's that simple. And then you have yourself a beautiful little container to use for whatever you want to use it for. You could use it for a candle holder. You could use it for a little vase for something. But I'm going to be using it to store some things in. Probably some of my um, 
gel pens because I don't have anything to keep those and I have them in that big box up there out of my way and I'm trying to get things you know down here at my desk where I can just grab and use what I need here a little bit easier so let me clean up this mess I'm going to set all these little guys up so they'll look really cute and we'll check those out all right everyone there they are I think they look cute these are so much nicer sitting on my craft table here instead of just cans and little baskets and whatever I had them shoved into before so this will definitely brighten up my craft room and I just wanted to share with you guys since I had so many people asking me what they were and how I did them so there they are simple easy and a lot of fun to make so thanks so much for watching everybody I hope you enjoyed this little project I will see you all next time have a great day everyone